let's jump in. So, uh, you know, equity has become a thing. It's become a, 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 a new, uh, new left concept. Uh, it used to be equality. It used to be social justice. It used to be a lot of things. But, but equity is a thing. And, and really, equity is focused in on, uh, uh, on equal outcomes, that is the essence of equity. Equity is how do we create a scenario? How do we help some um, and and potentially penalize others in order to achieve achieve is a strong word uh, equal outcomes. Uh, so it's all about equality, not not equality before the law, not equality of rights, not equality of of liberty, uh, not even equality of opportunity. Although equality of opportunity is kind of a, a messed up concept. But literally, equality of outcomes. So this is the true egalitarian nature of the left coming out. What, what, when they use equity, what they're really talking about is ultimately everybody being the same, everybody having the same amount of wealth, everybody having the same amount of knowledge. And, it's, and, 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 and you, have to, you have to really understand that they, they don't mean this in... A, um, a just a materialistic money sense. They mean equal, equal knowledge, and, and in some bizarre way, equal ability. And yet, uh, this is the left that claims the genes don't matter. It, it, it really is amazing how the, the crazy left and the crazy right always converge, always converge. Right, because uh, as long as uh, uh, so, it's it's uh, both the left and the right ultimately fall down to you know the 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 best you can do is what your genes provide for you. They all reject free will, but uh, you know the the so the so the egalitarian the egalitarianism here. Uh, of, of equity is it's the real thing. They're not hiding it anymore. It used to be in some sense uh, this was being hidden. It used to be that in some sense they were pretending that, no, they just wanted to uh, tell people out. And, and, and then, of course, we all know how to achieve uh, what they call equity. I hate that term because equity is just it's just another word for, for justice. It's just a, a, of doing something right, equitable. And, and they're perverting it here into some uh, modern leftist um, uh, horrible uh, equality of outcome thing. So how do we make everybody equal? Well, we all know how to do that. I mean, I, I explained that to all of you when I talked about LeBron James and how do we make me and LeBron James equal in basketball? Well, how do you make us equal, right? In wealth, we know how to do it. We tax some and, and, and we pay welfare to others and, and we, don't make them, we don't make them completely equal, but that's because we haven't taken our egalitarianism really seriously. The really serious egalitarians want to make us equal. And, and, and these leftists want a serious egalitarians. But... Money is relatively easy. You know, it's fungible. You can take it from here, take it from there. You can move it around. The, 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 you know, that, that's kind of easy to equate. But how do you equate knowledge? How do you equate ability? Well, I mean, I told the story in a book with Don Watkins, Equal is Unfair, about how Pol Pot did it, right? You kill those who are able you kill everybody who sticks his head up, who's a little different, who's a little better, who's a little more knowledgeable, who has a little bit more intelligence. That's certainly one way to do it. But, you know, we're not yet at the point, yet at the point in America where we're willing to kill the able. So what are we going to do? Well, one way to do it is to hamper them, to, to restrain them, to stop them from advancing, to stop them from moving forward, to stop them from improving. To stop them from gaining knowledge, other people maybe can't because they don't have the capacity for it. So what we can do is chop LeBron James' legs off without killing him. But of course, that too is 
unappealing and, and everybody, nobody actually advocates for. It's violence. And everybody's against violence. But if we manage to hamper people's brains, if we hamper their progress, if we hamper their soul, if we, if we, if we destroy their potential, well, you can't see that. There's no blood. There's no blood. And this is what the left loves. And this is why the dominance of our educational system is so scary and so horrific. So what do they do? Well, in California, and it turns out now that in, uh, in Cambridge, Massachusetts, Cambridge, Massachusetts, home to Harvard and MIT, right? In Cambridge, Massachusetts, in the city of Cambridge, uh, has recently removed algebra and all advanced math from its junior high schools. L let me repeat that. They've removed algebra and all advanced math from their middle schools. Why? You might say, why are they, why are they doing this? Well, because some kids can't take algebra in middle school. Some kids can, and some kids can't. And the way to close the gap between them is to not allow the kids who can to move forward. The way to make everybody equal is to paralyze or to restrain or to lower the standards. Or to, but it's not even the standards, right? Because you're, you, you're literally holding back. You're literally not allowing the kids to advance. You're reigning that, you know, you're... So that everybody can catch up and everybody can learn the same stuff altogether. And this, this is already prevalent in California. Um, and, and it was supposed to be even harsher. It's all based on the work of a, of a Stanford academic, Stanford academic by the name of uh, Joe Boala, B-O-A-L-E-R, just so you know to be careful. So Joe Boala's uh, proposal for California was a lot more radical. A lot of that has been watered down. There was some criticism of it. It was watered down. But the end of the day, the end of the day, um, it's um, California and now Massachusetts, at least in Cambridge, are basically committed to this idea of the way to achieve equity, the way to achieve equality. They figured it out. I mean, I've known this forever, and, and inequal is not fair. We lay this out. The way to achieve equality is to rein in talent, ability, ambition, to destroy it. Remos is just pure evil, absolutely just pure evil, Un unequivocally just pure evil. So the approach there is, if not everybody can do algebra, nobody should do algebra. If not everybody can read, nobody should read. I'm, I'm extrapolating. If not everybody can read, I, I don't know, Les Miserables in high school, nobody should read Les Miserables in high school. Maybe we should just burn the books that only some people can read. Maybe we should stop teaching algebra to all ages because not everybody can do algebra in any age. Equity ultimately is lowering our lives to the lowest common denominator. Equity ultimately is the most evil, most unjust, most horrific, literally most evil idea that exists out there. There is nothing more evil than the idea of equality of outcome. There is nothing more evil than what Paul Pot did and why he did it and how he did it. And there is nothing more evil than these people who want to hold back some 
for the sake of those who cannot keep up. It's horrific. Now, just to give you a a positive counter, uh, the Dallas Independent School District also noticed that not everybody's taking algebra. Uh, you know, the, the, or, or the, not everybody's taking the more advanced uh, classes, uh, in this case, honors, math, enrollment in sixth grade. And indeed, that there was a racial disparity. About 50% of white kids were taking it, but only 17% of black kids were taking uh, honors math, were, were enrolling in honors math. And it said, you know, we'd like to get more kids to take it. And we'd like to get generally more kids to take it because we want to raise everybody up. We want to provide more kids with more tools. So what the Dallas School Board did in the independent school district is usually you have to opt in for honors math enrollment. But what they did is they made math enrollment something you have to opt out of. And you actually have to get your parents to sign off on opting out of it. And it turned out that once they did that, enrollment in math, in the honors class in math, skyrocketed. Uh, Among white kids, it went up to 82%. Among black kids, it went to 43, from 17 to 43. That's like a threefold, greater than a threefold increase. So if you care about kids who are left behind, challenge them. If you care about kids left behind, encourage them. Because the truth is that many kids can take algebra in sixth grade. Many kids can be good in math. And a lot of it is just about challenging them. Now, you might think, oh, a lot of kids are taking this class, but they're failing. But it turned out that it didn't. That's not the case. Almost all of them are passing. They're getting good grades. 91% of the back st- black students, uh, this, this new cohort, 43% of all black students, are, are passing this course. Right? And, and this is across all the honors classes. And they don't, they're not just passing everybody. These are honors classes. They have standards. But if you teach kids well, all kids, almost all kids can get algebra at sixth grade, sixth grade. So the way to deal with kids falling behind is to encourage them to rise up, to challenge them. I mean, maybe the story of Marva Collins in Chicago where she had this private school and, and, and she had the poorest of the poorest of the kids attending. They were all, all black. And she took these kids in, and it was a small classroom, and they all went to college. I mean, 100%. And a huge achievement. And they would have died in public schools. Why? She challenged them. It was... It was a... Um, uh, what do you call it? A, you know, she, she, she demanded. She was incredibly demanding. All right, I mean, I can't think of anything more evil than what they're doing in Cambridge and in California. I, I, I don't think it's surprising, but it's still pretty horrific.